Alrighty, welcome everyone. I'm Tia Boo and it is Friday. Happy Friday to you all. I hope you're having a good day and I hope you go on to have a lovely weekend. We are here, of course, for the penultimate episode of the first core of Legend of Vox Machina. Whispers at the Ziggurat. Ooh, whispers, 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 Ukutoa, whispers. Ah, it makes me very happy because I like this portion of the story and I like what's about to happen. And there might be things that happen that I'm not expecting to happen. And that's very exciting. We're in a good spot. We're in a good spot. And this is a good place to, to end the core, methinks, or getting close to a good place to end the core. Last week's episode, we got trapped in an acid room with Dr. Anna Ripley, the one-handed, uh, very, very evil, manipulative lady who Percy hates a lot. Um, and we got betrayed on two fronts. Uh, Vax got super-duper charmed and is now with the Briarwoods, and they're going to potentially use him as a sacrifice, or Cassandra, or both, you know, whatever. Uh, whatever causes the most pain and suffering for other people in this world is what the Briarwoods will do, because that's what they like to do. Um, we were also hard betrayed by Cassandra, who locked us in the acid chamber. Um, and it's, like, there's a little bit of charm there, but it's also actually her. And she's actually sad and pissed and, and all fucked up and totally traumatized real hard. Man, we've had a week of crazy betrayals. I'm gonna step back for a moment and just, just mention that this week in anime has been so many fucking betrayals <laughs> like so many times we've been betrayed this week it's rough as as like an anime watcher so many things have just been deep and lasting betrayal over the course of the week i mean osama ranking wasn't this week but there was some massive betrayal there massive betrayal in area 88 pretty pretty solid betrayals in gundam and stuff it's just all over the place man Woo. oh it's been a tough one for for like legitimate relationships and communication and all the things that I actually value in the world. It's been hard. Um, luckily, it hasn't been as hard in the, the real world. It's just been hard mentally for me because my sleep has been shit. That's just the nature of it. Uh, it's been getting really hot and yesterday was no exception. I just basically didn't sleep last night. Um, I laid in bed and I, I watched some YouTube videos and I listened to some podcasts and I waited to fall asleep, and it just didn't happen until a little bit later, and then I got a couple hours, but oh boy, it just didn't happen. One of those nights. Anyway, that's fully an aside, but you can tell that I'm a little scattered, I'm sure. Um, that's basically where we left off. There were some betrayals. We got out of the acid chamber in a couple of lovely sequences that were very fun. What with Grog diving into the acid and burning himself alive in order to save his friends. Very good. Very cool. Um, and then on to comment spotlight. Um... So, first off, on episode 9, there are a bunch of comments that have to do with talking about the Archie conversation um, that I had, or, like, ways that they thought of, that other people have thought about rewriting it to put the reminiscence somewhere else, and then maybe have it later with the fighting, and then maybe it wouldn't feel as, as deeply death-flagged and stuff. I don't know. It's, it's all good. Um, it's all, it's all fine. And on the most recent episode, Bill DeWitt writes that Cassandra's betrayal is interesting, that having her visibly charmed is a bit of a double-edged sword because it makes her less interesting as a character and provides an obvious easy way out for re resolving the relationship. If Percy realizes that she was charmed, he can forgive her completely and it would be fine. Uh, and that would feel a bit lackluster to Bill, and I kind of agree. On the other hand, however, removing any mystery from her character shifts the viewer's focus squarely onto Percy, who's the much more important character, and how he'll respond to this. Precisely. Um, it's it's about how Percy feels about being betrayed and what that causes in him more than it is about the fact of Cassandra's betrayal and the, the actual mechanical nature of it, right? Um, I am, I am presuming that Percy didn't see the charm because he seems more in line with my sister betrayed me rather than the Briarwoods charm my sister, but I may be wrong. No, I think you're right. I think you're fully right. And then goes on to say that Scanlan shredding on the lute as background music was sick. And it was. And, and this is a good comment. Thank you, Bill. And that's going to be it for our comment spotlight. It's just a, it's a quickie. It's a quick one today. Hopefully there will be some more interesting discussion after this episode. So... Before we can get to that, we gotta watch the episode, and that's what we're gonna do. And before we do that, I gotta shill. There are links in the description. If you check them out, you'll find maybe things that might be, might interest you. I'm done shilling. Let's watch episode... <laughs> I crack myself up sometimes. Let's watch episode 11 of Legend of Vox Machina. I've got it up and ready to go. It's at... Uh, there will only be one version, but it's at zero seconds. The timer is coming at you. Beep, beep, timer. Let's go.
Ah, the zipper twat. I like this ticking in the back. Ooh, that's a grin. Gosh, she's so hot. Ah, ah, it's almost ready. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Those are words. Where are all the bodies? Where are all the dead people? <laughs> it's now. A zipper twat. The little eyebrow from Ripley. <sighs> That's what it is. Uh, he can do it. It's now. Uh oh. Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, uh oh. Of course. We all got our own motivation. Oh, hot. Do <laughs> what? I didn't say. Oh. And so am I. <laughs> we'll see. They got a great relationship, though. You gotta, you gotta respect that evil vampire sex. Like. They're doing great. Good for them. Power couple goals for real. <laughs> the whispered one is coming, and so am I. <laughs> they should have. They should have. It would have killed me. Okay. Whispers of the zipper twat. Well, this is a battle. You know, little glowy eyes. Uh huh. <laughs> please don't, please don't kill her. Oh, uh, you're gonna kill her. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Buddy, giving you an opportunity. <sighs> <laughs> Fucking idiot. Amazing. So good. Yeah. So Pike glowing. Is this how we're doing her terror at her terrible self rolls? Nah. Uh. Fuck off. Foof. Er, 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 er. Oh, he holds it back. That is not how she escaped before. Oh. Oh. It does not like you holding back. That's great. Well, that's weird. Hey, guys, the PDA. Can we... Oh, bit up all the time. Oh, God. All right, Silas. I kill people. Uh-oh.
Destruction! Shoot him. Shoot him. It'll give him the chance to make another saving throw. Oh, no. Uh-oh. Ow. Ow. <laughs> He'll be fine. Oh. Nice ice. Hey, lover boy. Oh, please don't murder me. Oh, brother and sister. It doesn't work. Oh, God. You gotta punch him. You gotta stab him. You gotta stab him. Stop running away. Stab him. I believe that. The double voice. Ah, shit, he doesn't care. Well, he does, but the that doesn't. Yeah! Uh. Oh. Hmm. Okay. Where's the sword? That was a great whoosh from him. Very angular, very good. Ow. Oh, there it is! Hello! Oh, a shield of faith! Oh, hell yeah, dude. Ufa! Ufa! Very good. Oh, that was a great sequence. That punch was sick. Go, Pikey! Hit it with the Radiant Dare! Oh, no. Alright, that's so sick. That's so sick. Okay, we're Yodaing it? Fuck off. Actually, stop. Ah, uh, everything's shit. Ah, shit, it's silence. No. My music. Well, we are hard losing in every possible way. Oh, it's well choreographed fights. Ah, uh, I might have to pull out the Jackie Chan examples again. I won't. I won't have to. It's so well choreographed. They did it. Zoink. Oh. That's like cool. Brothers and sisters, eh? Brothers and sisters. Yeah. No. Control, 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 control. Wow, fully fighting himself. Uh, nope. <laughs> there were some great bits of character animation in there. Oh, fun. Oh, fun. Very fun. Cool dynamic shot. Cool. Cool. Very cool. I see that all of the budget went into this episode. <laughs> like all of it. Like all of it. You think? Fuck off. Fuck off. I want the music. Hell yeah. <laughs> Beautiful. Oh, wow. Uh oh. Ow. Oh.
He's really trying not to kill you, Cass. He's really trying not to, dude. Ah, shit. Your memory's been fucked with, girl. Your whole viewpoint is trash. Oh, and it's it's reminiscent of the same moment. Ah. No. Uh oh. He's gonna bite. Uh oh. Ah. Reinstate the charm. Ah. I hate it. Kiki, what you got? You got anything? Something would be good right now. Something would be good right now. Is this be will this be like number four for big old keyless saves? Ah shit. Ah shit. Kiki. Ah the roots! The roots! The roots are on fire. Ew. Uh-huh. Please tell me it's Matt. Please tell me it's Matt. Tell me it's Matt's Suntree voice. Yup. Yes. Hey, Kiki. Ow, oh, shit. Whoa! Oh. Oh, that was great. That's great. That was shockingly good. Yeah, Silas is not going to be a fan of that. Oop. Up. Yep, thwack him really hard. Nope, thwack him real hard. <laughs> hey, you just had to thwack him, dude. It's really important. Uh, oh no, it's going poorly. Ha! Ah. Hmm. We're doing a beam battle, eh? Yep. Okay. Shut the fuck up and help! <laughs> Ah. Hi, Craven. Get noped on. Get noped on real good. And who noped on you? Is it Gurg? Uh. It's Gurg. Hi. Ah. Ah. I want your sword. They got the momentum. All the fights have been amazing. Mmm, stealing your strength. Stealing your blood. Ooh. Charms. Wait, no. Mindless rage. Mindless rage. Mindless rage. Mindless rage. Mindless rage. Mindless rage. <laughs> What? <laughs> wait, wait. Thinking with his brain case. Yeah. Ah. True. Ooh, enjoy the sunlight. Oh, shit. Oh, 
Oh, yeah. Did we get the line? Oh, brutal. And she just gets to watch. Ah, I'll be fine. He'll be fine. He'll be fine. Oh. Oh. So many fun animation tricks throughout the course of this episode. Like, so many. So many. Hey, we did it. Wait, find his resting place. Find his resting place. No, he's not dead yet. <laughs> no, 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 no. Find his resting place. <laughs> That's not how vampires work. <laughs> ah, shit. <laughs> done and done. Great. Here we go. I broke... Hey, hey, Cass is strong. Okay. Hey. Uh oh. Yeah, she's not running away. Oh boy. Wait, what? For uh oh, there they are. Ah, ah, uh. Okay, so it's all inside the zipper twat. <sighs> this is sufficiently spooky. Bring me back first. Oh, previewing. Oh, previewing. Or aura vitality. No. Hmm. 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 Ah. 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 Uh. Entropies. Uh, uh. Spinny, spinny, spinny. <laughs> Should have taken Knox, Scanlon. You know. Mm. Oh god, oh no. Too late. I love the flickering shadow, that's great. Bring. Nope. Nope. Success. One shot, one opportunity. Oh, put the... Yikes. Oh, Kiki, don't take that. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, right after her salvation moment? Oh. We got a pike. We're fine. Wait, that's not how...
Bye. Uh oh. 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 It didn't work. Oh, but it did. Oh, but it worked, Delilah. This is all you needed. Wah! Kiki? Anybody got Revivify? Pikey? Pikey? No! Well, hell! Oh no, indeed. You gotta move, dude. Great place to end it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We gotta get her out of here. Gotta do something. And what the fuck is that? Don't touch it. Best fights so far, right? Like, uh, the Silver Tongue fight was the best fight so far until today. And then all, all of the fights were as, uh, like, it was that, but it was the whole episode. It was great. Uh, super, super bombastic. Very dynamic. Very fun. Great fights. We're going to go through them. It's, that was great fights. So good. So good. Love it. Chirp indeed, Titmouse Entertainment. Chirp indeed. Um, this was good. This was solid. Uh, uh, I was saying it as we headed into the ED, but some of the best fight scenes, um, full stop in the entire show. Also, I think the just general setup of the location is super strong. It's 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 super strong. We get a clear dynamic for where our characters are, what exactly they need to stop. It's time bound. It's important. They understand the to some extent that something evil and horrible will happen. We have a strong understanding of the motivations of the villains as well as the motivations of our main characters. Because the villains are driving the plot, right? They're the ones creating antagonism. They're the ones creating action. It's most important what their motivations are because our characters' motivations are really simple, which is just stop them from doing whatever. And that leaves us with some mysteries as to what are they going to do. And it's great. Um, the little grog combo in the beginning is very fun and very cute. And then more set up with this location stuff, right? We're going to have this big staircase. We're just going to have this area down below. And Anna Ripley makes her way out with our knowledge. Um, in the main campaign, I believe she like goes invisible or something. She uses a hidden magic item to, to go invisible or to teleport or something like that and starts booking it the fuck out of here and we have to make the choice to go after Delilah and Silas instead of going after her. This works really well. Uh, immediately, I think this is powerful. I think Percy literally battling with his demons is solid. It works extraordinarily well over the course of the episode. And most importantly, this visual effect of the smoke coagulating into this bestial face over his face and taking over him and then him pushing it away is fantastic. Um, clearly, it is not entirely aligned with him and is really fucked up. Find out just how fucked up Cassandra is. She's been bit up a bunch. And then Percy uh, quick walks super a little weird <coughs> straight up towards Silas and we begin our fight. -o. And it's cool. So. Delilah unleashes some stuff, and we start booming, zooming, swanging, and banging. And it's really good. We immediately split the fight up into brother and sister, brother and sister, and uh, into Keyleth holding Silas and trying, at least trying to. This is where things really kick off for me in terms of the fight quality, because the 1v1 hand-to-hand -hand combat between Keyleth and Silas is stellar. Um, in general, they make Silas really strong and imposing, but he's also uh, really, how do I put it, um, there's a word that I'm looking for and I can't find it. Um, uh, he's a lot more a agile than you might expect from somebody like him. 
given that he's a big beefy boy with a big beefy sword, and Shield of Faith. Yay! So this battle continues, and it just gets better. I think this moment where we get the, the like, Pillar of Earth coming at him, and this really solid, not Obari punch, really, but, like, a, a dynamic from below gazelle punch style thing. Boom, boom. Sort of jojo -Z in some ways. She brings this up. It connects anyway. And we get this long hold to 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 get the the feeling of ugh, and the emotional impact of that and then we do this slow zoom out to a different frame into poof, really impactful i actually didn't realize that there was that's that's really cool so you don't see this in it you, you don't see it but your brain does um this moment where he actually pulls back and then launches right back back stretch launch and keyleth becomes just a dart of green energy and then is poof gone super duper fun i really like that and then the immediate after effect is click click boom bam very very good very very dynamic um and then this fight is literally pike is yoda and uh he is a spinning whirlwind of death blades and i like it i like it a lot i think it's actually really cool Zoop, 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 zoop. One's a claw, one's the, the sword. And we're back and forth. We're really dynamic in all of these moments. Everything is well choreographed. And we've got this sort of sequence as they, they go step, 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 step down the, uh, down the thing. Boof, 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 boof. Um, with a, a really, really good flow to all of it. It's super solid. And then, of course, there's this stuff, which is the problem. It's not actually a problem, but just like Yoda floating up around in space, it doesn't make any sense. So it's a little bit of a problem. I don't care. It's rad. I think it, I think it's really cool, and I don't mind it one bit. Pickle getting the chance to be a bit of a marshal is really cool, because she is a war cleric, right? So why not? All right. Uh, Scanlan gets silenced, and that sucks for the rest of the fight, because we could have had some dope-as-fuck music, and instead we don't. Uh, we get this fight. He gives us the I know, and that's sad. And then we have this side of the dynamic fighting stuff, where he's again fighting against his villains, against his demons. Some of these scenes are really a little weird and disconnected. Like, this scene reminds me of a Symphogear hallway shot in XV. Um, it's the, it's the, actually the shot with the claws, which I think is a, an extraordinary piece of animation. And some of, like, one of the, the best single shots of um, clearly rotoed, like, CG-assisted Sakuga that I've ever seen. And then this is like that, where we're doing this really dynamic movement toward a character across frame, and we're moving the camera as we do. But it's disconnected, and there's this cut here, right here. We cut from one side to the other, and it breaks up the flow of the whole shot. And then she's flipping and whipping and stuff in ways that I, I just don't feel are right in this scene. It's fine. It, it's not, like, a big deal or even a problem necessarily, but... It is a thing. And then this is pure service. Um, again, like, fan service doesn't necessarily mean sexy stuff. It means doing things that are really fun. And having Pike shield slide down a, a banister while he, like, swings and boot slides down the banister at her. And it's full of schmears. And it's full of whips and slips and flips and dips. Oh, it's super duper sick. Same with the chuck a sword uh, 3D shot into, yeah, big 3D shot into chuck a sword into dink, donk, grab, zoom into continue the 3D shot. So my expectation was that we're going to cut here, right? He grabs his sword. That's the end of the uh, end of the cut. Moves to the next cut. Instead, they warp it through. So we start moving the frame again and bring it back into the 1v1. And it's really sick that they do that because it brings us into this dynamic sequence back and forth. And we get these really solid expressions from Silas as he's illuminated by Pike's glow. And we see him for exactly the kind of monster that he is. And again, more of these super dynamic 3D CG assisted uh, shots. Moving through, moving through, zoom, zoom. Super duper sick. The budget, the animation budget for, for these fight scenes is more than any episode up to this point. Easily and clearly. Um, and that's that's great. So Pike saves Scanlan and Scanlan is happy. Percy is battling his demon and he literally has one and then the other. And Cassandra looks up and there's a flare as he bleeds as Silas slashes him. And she realizes that she's a fucked up dum-dum and she shouldn't be doing this. And then he charms her again, and that sucks. Uh, Delilah is a bigger problem, and Kiki gets another Kiki moment. This is so interesting to me. I wonder how much of the, like, how do I put this? They made Kiki the main character. Even though, I mean, it's Percy's arc, right? But the number of epic 
grog moments that we've had is like one or two. Number of epic Scanlan moments we've had is like one or two. Number of epic blah, 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 blah. Haven't really even had too many epic Vex or Vax moments, right? But then Keyleth. Every fight. Keyleth saves the day. Like, every fight. Like, the uh, first dragon, she saves them with the, the vines. And the ice storm is really badass. And then there's this, and she saves the day with sunlight and empathy. Keyleth's the main character. In, ter in terms of, like, focused screen time for climactic moments. Keyleth's the main character. Which is weird. It's it's a little weird. I don't have a problem with it necessarily, but it is, like, it's odd. So, we again have a moment where Keyleth is like, I'm not strong enough, and then the sun tree reaches out to her. And it's a gorgeous fucking moment. But I just wanted to step back from it for a second and be like, it's a little weird. Of course, they are, we are going to have Keyleth, like, full by now, right? Like, she gets n near killed by Delilah. So, maybe it's meant to be a juxtaposition sort of thing. Also, is that right? Is that... I feel like that's not what happened? Hold on. Okay, so Keyleth uses Sunbeam. And she and, and Pike tag team it. Yeah, I know it's Vex who goes down. Yeah, wow, that's a huge change. I understand, I think I, think I understand why we're going to do it this way. But it's Vex who goes down in the campaign. Keyleth does not go down here. Vex, at this point, was flying around on a flying broom that she had, and she gets knocked out of the sky and goes unconscious. Yeah. And she's got death saving throws going, but she's in the room. Yeah. That's exactly what happens. I thought it was, I thought it was weird. I think we're doing it so that we can, we can seal the deal on the romance between Vax and, and Keyleth, and, and bring things together a little bit more effectively. That, I think that's why we're doing it, because, like... Vex going down causes Vax to go absolutely out of his mind for a moment, right? That's really interesting. So I assume he's going to act the same way, but it's going to be Keyleth. Really interesting. Okay, regardless, this whole sequence is fantastic. Um, this glowy up and then this. So th this spinning shot is really impressive to me. Yep. Again, it's, it's CG assisted for sure, but it's fantastic feeling. It really looks and feels excellent. And this glow up in here, and then the reaction to the glow, and then the glowing massive treescape is awesome. And the grog fight is also awesome. So we have to take a step back into fighting stuff. And again, it's super well choreographed, really well put together. It's really spicy stuff. We see the, the blade, and grog is not down to be charmed. No, mindless rage, it's in. So grog holds him up, and Keyleth knocks him down. This moment here with the glowing roots, and the music build, oh, ha, ha, and big choral stuff in the background, super lovely. Scaling getting back at her with the silence, also super lovely. Ooh, and this, um, big animation trick stuff, boof, 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 goof, and then there's on the other side, where is it? No, it's, it's just in this moment. Boom, pow, boom, super cool. Ah, it's that one. Okay, that's the one I was thinking. I was thinking, I was thinking I was like, there's something else. It's this moment where, like, light is, like, ripping off of Keyleth in shards. And blasting, and booming, and zooming, and we did it. That kill was mine. Ooh, interesting. And? Ah, oh, shit. Oh, no! Sad girl is sad. Angry girl is angry. And I kept asking, where are all the weird bodies? There they are. There. There they are, and so we will complete the ritual. It's super spooky and super creepy, and it finally works, sort of. And we get to see exactly what she wanted to see. Also, Keyleth goes down. Okay, we'll figure that out. He's here! Hi! Hello, friend. You look friendly. Do you want to be my friend? Pen pals with Vecna? <laughs> Uh, meet the Whispered One. H hello. And she's very happy that this has succeeded. And then it doesn't succeed, and she's very sad. And so we shoot her a bunch, and she we don't know what's going on. And Pike is gone and cannot save us. Fuck. Fuck, fuck, fuck. Spinny, spin, spin. Fuck, fuck, fuck. What is that thing? What is going on? What is happening? Ah! Sweet. Straightforward battle episode, as I would expect and desire. 
And for the most part, our battle is over, right? So, like, we win. We've won the day. We've driven off the whites, the, the Briarwoods. Uh, we've taken down Delilah and can do what we please with her, with her body. Oh, that sounded wrong. Um, but, you know, I don't think she's dead dead yet, but we'll figure it out. So, we need to resolve Percy's problem. His little shadow problem probably needs to be resolved. We might get to do that in the next episode. Seems like, seems likely to me. And then we need to triumphantly take over Whitestone. Um, as well as figure out what this orb is and save Keyless life. That's actually a lot of stuff to do in one episode for the next episode. But I think it's viable. I think it's possible to do all of it. I'm not worried about it. I think they can do it. All in all, I think this was a pretty darn solid episode. It executed on a really climactic classic battle in the, the Critical Role universe really, really well. Um, better than I honestly expected it to. They broke the fight up into really interesting chunks and made it super dynamic and super fun in a way that d d at table combat doesn't necessarily feel until certain great moments. Here, they just scattered it full of really great moments and made it visually really interesting. I got no problems with that. I thought it was I thought it was really fun. Even Pike Yoda ing it up against Silas is pretty cool. Um, all in all, I think they made some fun decisions and had a, a lot of enjoyment with it, a lot of a lot of fun making it. And that shows and it ends up being a lot of fun to watch and experience on this end. So good stuff, Critical Role. Good stuff, everybody. I like this episode quite a bit. I think it's pretty solid. Um, it doesn't have that like the depth of characterization that the Silver Tongue episode had, but it really nails a lot of these fight sequences in a way that feels really good and bombastic and explosive and fun. And I like it a lot. Cool. I think that's going to be the wrap for me. So I've been Tiabu. This has been Legend of Vox Machina episode 11. I hope you've enjoyed watching it. If you did, you can check out the links down in the description or like and comment and subscribe and stuff. And I will see you next week for more and the last episode of Vox Machina, at least for now. See you there. Peace.